What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. It's March 31st as I record this, the last day of Q1 2020. Um, that means all our favorite companies are getting set to report their earnings and uh, business metrics uh, for the first quarter of this year. It has been a crazy quarter. Nobody could have expected um, all this crazy turmoil. You know, right now, the US and Europe are pretty much, the, those entire economies are shut down right now. And no companies have actually really started to report. I mean, Apple put out a press release saying they're gonna miss their own guidance. Square came out with a press release saying they're gonna miss their own guidance. Same with Ford, same with GM. But companies like Tesla have not really issued um, any official updates just because this has all happened so quickly and this is the first quarter where it's unfolded. So now, um, as Q1 comes to a close, in the next couple days, Tesla's going to put out their quarterly vehicle deliveries as always, which I cover on the channel. is always a blast to go through and get that update on the most important metric Tesla has. How many cars did they build and deliver in the period? This allows us to figure out their financials. Um, I'm gonna plug that into my model, show you what my expectations translate to in terms of financial metrics. Um, so tons of excitement, but this is all guesswork. I mean, we really have no idea how many cars Tesla was able to build and produce um, the entire last month or so of this quarter. I mean, Tesla didn't officially shut down its factory until March 23rd, but the whole last month of this quarter has been riddled with, um, you know, these coronavirus concerns. I think consumer foot traffic has been dropping off a cliff. Um, you know, Tesla traditionally has done a lot of their deliveries in the wave methodology. Um, and because they are only producing their cars in Fremont, California for the entire world, they start building cars for foreign markets first. So they can put those cars on, uh, you know, trucks or trains um, or boats and get them into their end market before the end of the quarter to count those deliveries. So in the first, you know, month or two of the quarter, they're building cars for China, for Europe, for Japan, for all these other markets. Then at the last month of the quarter, they build cars for US customers because those have the shortest delivery times, starting with the East Coast, then going to the West Coast. And I think a lot of the US demand for these cars relies on, you know, organic foot, foot traffic during the month of March. When you also layer into the fact that this is Q1, when, you know, it's super seasonally weak for the auto industry, this, the just the industry's lowest sales quarter. Um, and many of those low sales are because nobody's buying cars in January in February, but it starts to pick back up in March. And that's when I'm guessing the bulk of Q1 sales happen, except in March, the entire economy was shutting down. So we have so many different factors at play here, but I think the biggest thing factoring in into my analysis before I get into the numbers is that Tesla's wave delivery methodology um, is going to significantly get impacted here because the entire last part of the wave where they would make these push for US deliveries and European deliveries um, is going to have been totally derailed um, by this, you know, illness 19 uh, outbreak. It's crazy. This feels like for ever ago, but just on Mar March 11th, Tesla tweeted they actually produced their millionth car. It was a performance Model Y. Um, this was such a feel-good moment, like this happy Twitter picture. Um, and then everyone starts, you know, trying to figure out, okay, well, how many cars did Tesla produce heading into the quarter? If we use those numbers and then subtract a million, we can figure out and get the difference, sort of, you know, back into a way to figure out what Q1 production would be. Um, and I, I think these people got it way wrong. I didn't look too much into this because, um, you know, like, Inside EVs here saying uh, that production should easily exceed 100,000 cars. Deliveries might be about around 100,000 too. I think these numbers are way, way off um, just two or three weeks ago. Um, and the reason why is because I think just because Tesla produced a million cars, I think there's a lot of cars they produced that didn't really get sold, that didn't get counted. Um, I don't know. I just think there's a lot of like unofficialness in those numbers and you don't want to read too much into these numbers that aren't actually legit or from Tesla. And so I think a lot of people got way off track, getting super excited about the potential for Q1 deliveries. Um, when I think they are going to be awful. I, frankly, I, I'm just going to prepare you guys for my estimate. Um, I think this is going to be a really bad quarter. One one piece of evidence um, we haven't, you know, like I said, this is to total guesswork. But um, Electric was just reporting that Tesla starts preparing M Model Y rear wheel drive deliveries amid a drop in demand. I think this is symbolic of really what's happening across the board right now, um, which is that Tesla originally, you know, only delivering those super high uh, price versions, the performance and dual uh, all wheel drive dual motor version of the Model Y to start the the um, real wheel drive version wasn't supposed to really be delivered until late 2020, but now all of a sudden they're contacting customers and asking them for imminent delivery of the Model Y rear wheel drive. Um, this is even more confusing when you consider that this is a time when Fremont is shut down. So it's like, how did they even build that if the factory was shut down? Um, but this to me points that, um, and this is sort of more anecdotal evidence that I've been reading, is that Tesla's been contacting a bunch of people who are pretty far down the list for Model Y reservations um, and asking them to take delivery because I think a ton of people are canceling. That's even what this electric article says. Um, they're speculating that a lot of people are just canceling their orders. Um, and I think this is indicative of not just the Model Y, but that's probably been happening for the Model 3, for the Model S, for the Model X. And this is 
isn't just a Tesla problem. That's so important to keep in mind. Um, I feel like I'm caveating my prediction so much because I think it's like a shocking number and it's gonna, this quarter is gonna look so ugly on every business and financial metric for like every single company in the world. That is just what's happening right now. This no company can escape this macroeconomic pressure and situation and it's just leaching into every aspect of the economy. I mean, you know, the economy goes down, less people are going out, less people are spending money on the things, especially big ticket items like cars. Cars are some of the first things to get hit in any recession and Tesla is going to do way better than its competition. It's going to continue to gain market share. It's going to continue to outsell, you know, GM and Ford. It's going to continue to be the leader in electric vehicles, but the entire end market and demand for electric vehicles as a whole is shrinking and Tesla sales are going to shrink. And so, all right, enough hype. Let's just get into the estimates. So this is hypercharts.co slash Tesla. Um, this is the vehicle deliveries chart um, heading into now. As you can see, Blockbuster Q4, they delivered about 110,000 cars. This was a record for the company um, breakout quarter. But remember, Q1 2019, uh, very weak. Seasonally, Q1 is their weakest quarter. Also, Q1 2018, you can see it was pretty weak as well. So I'm expecting, um, you know, this is the number we're comparing it to, Q1 2019. Here are my estimates. Um, I'm looking at about... Um, you can actually see the number here, but 65,000 cars delivered total. Um, and this is, remember, deliveries. Um, so this is just what I'm estimating right now. Um, I, You know, it's total guesswork. And this is about 5% growth from last year. So I'm still assuming Tesla grew from last year, but I just think the entire end of the quarter just vanishing as the global economy shut down, crushed European deliveries, crushed US deliveries. A ton of people canceled orders. It made it super hard to actually get the cars to customers who had ordered and paid for them. And I think that pressure is gonna be seen on every facet um, of, of these sales. And so um, that is what it is. Um, I think this translates into revenue um, of about, 4.3 billion for the quarter, which would be lower than 4.54 billion of last year. So from a financial perspective, this is going to get pretty ugly too. Um, as you can see, I mean, uh, yeah, we can zoom into revenue here. So revenue not looking good. This would be a year over decline of about 10% or 8%. Gross profit will be going down as well. Operating income, I have it coming out at negative 535 million, uh, down from negative 522 million. And remember, these are just estimates based on my model. Um, as you can see for the gross margin here, I assume that gross margin, um, this is where I try to be super conservative, was 12% versus 12.5% in Q1 last year, which was a super horrible number for Tesla, their lowest they reported in years. I'm assuming that gets even worse at just 12%. And that's the reason for these, uh, you know, huge losses and uh, the, the weak gross profit overall for the company. And just a little more to dive in to show you how I get to these numbers. I'll put a link to this, um, my estimates on hypercharts and this Google sp uh, spreadsheet um, in the link below. So you can play with it yourself, plug in your own numbers. I even have what I was expecting in January and December. So you can compare all this, but this is what I have for March 31st. Um, as you can see, 65,250 deliveries, 55,000 model three. And these are, um, I originally last night, my newsletter that I sent out to Patreons, I estimated 45,000 model threes, um, but I upped that to 55,000 because I think China is going to be a bright spot. I'm going to get to that later. Um, um, but 55,000 um, Model 3, 250 Model Y, which is the only number I moved up. I, I was at 100 Model Y for the quarter um, in January, but now I'm at 250. And then 5,000 Model S, 5,000 Model X, which is down year over year, down sequentially. Re average revenue per car, 55,000, down a little bit. That gets me to automotive revenue of 3.589 billion. Service revenue, which I had at about 600, I took down to 400 because I think you know less cars are getting fixed, less people are supercharging um, as the economy shutdown happened. Energy revenue, I had like at 450, but I took down to 300 just because I think, you know, uh, big utilities placing orders for mega packs and power packs could do, be in a capex shutdown or slowdown or freeze in this time of crisis, stopping big new battery installations. Home solar got harder to install. Uh, once again, more people canceling their orders because of the whole economy. Um, this tied into this all added up to 4.2, uh, 4.3 billion in revenue gross margin wise. I assume 12%, um, once again, a huge hit from last quarter and, uh, that resulted in 550 million in gross profit. And the reason why I assume such a hit to gross margin is Tesla's all about a fixed cost business and producing cars on this, you know, very expensive production line to run. The more cars they can produce, there's a certain inflection point. They start to get extremely profitable. Then if they go below this watermark, then it gets extremely unprofitable. And we've seen that Tesla, you know, last year when they built about 63,000 cars here, you know, they only were able to produce 12.5% gross margin as they expanded to 112,000 cars. We hit 19%. So we're going to shrink back to that $63,000 base. Um, then you have the China shutdown while that factory was getting off the ground. You have Model Y first deliveries, always worse gross margin on those initial deliveries. I think all of those things are going to weigh heavily on gross margin. And that's why I assume 12%. I have it bouncing back to 15% next quarter. 
16% and 17%. Um, just to give you a little bit of flavor of what I'm thinking ahead, uh, you know, forward of this, uh, 60,000 deliveries next quarter. I'm expecting a further fall in Q2. Um, I think, you know, the US and Europe is just totally going to fall off a cliff. I mean, this is some news we just got. Um, Bay Area shelter in place order to be extended until May 1st at least. So this isn't getting better anytime soon. And, you know, that's just, I wanted to be super conservative in my estimates and, you know, always caveat this by saying like, I don't really care what Tesla does this quarter or next quarter. Um, you know, the, like the entire world is shutting down right now. So this isn't like changing my long-term view of Tesla and I'm not selling any stock, but I do think it is important to like prepare for the worst and plug that into my financial model so I can see how bad that would get um, for Tesla just to gauge the impact. And so I have 60,000 cars delivered next quarter, 50,000 Model 3, 2,000 Model Y, 4,000 S and X. Um, and yeah, and I think China is going to pick up a huge amount of the slack here. And that's why the only reason I have Model 3, um, you know, otherwise I'd probably have Model 3 deliveries at like 20 or 30,000 for the quarter if it wasn't for China. Um, but then I have that scaling to 70,000, then 90,000 um, as China continues to ramp. And then I assume that in Q3 2020, the U.S. starts to reopen and pick back up. I actually kind of assume late Q2. That's why I have the Model Y there. Then I assume, you know, increases in Model S and X with the S and X, you know, plaid refresh here in Q4, boosting those sales, boosting the ASP. And um, so I think Tesla's business will bounce back towards the end of the year. They'll post a record 135,000 levers in Q4, still modeling that. But this is going to be, you know, this is a huge change for the full year. This means I'm only estimating deliveries of about 350,000, which would be down a little bit from last year, but still very impressive, almost flat um, uh, or down like three to 5% in a year when the entire global economy crumbles is, is solid numbers for, for uh, any company. But you know, that's just the reality. If we take a look compared to January 2020, I think this is crazy. I was expecting 550,000 cars delivered, you know, 90,000 in Q1, 120,000 in Q2. And now just to compare, you know, 65, 60, it's, it's just, you know, the, my entire expectations have come down dramatically, but there is some silver lining. So Tesla Gigafactory Shanghai completes foundation build out in gigantic phase two zone. This article was literally published today um, by my buddy Simon. And so uh, Tesla enthusiast and drone operator recently visited the Giga Shanghai site where he documented a bunch of new developments. Uh, you should definitely check out this video. It's amazing, amazing footage. Um, and so it looks like they're building this new phase two, which is where they're either going to build the battery factory or the Model Y production line for 2021. I think this is a huge silver lining in all of this is that uh, China is back, uh, you know, up and running. And according to some reports by Tasmanian um, and the same YouTuber, it sounds like the China production ramp, they're, th they're throwing out this number of 3,000 units per week, which is 150,000 units per year, which is the target phase one capacity. I don't know if that's a burst rate or what they're actually doing, but I think the China factory is back up and running. It's been back up and running for a little over a month now. Um, we also just got news that Tesla reopened its uh, Gua Guang store. I hope I'm saying that right in the Wuhan province or in the Wuhan area. And so all of a sudden Tesla's reopening the stores in the center of China. They're reopening, you know, they've already reopened all their stores across China. Shanghai factory has been up and running for a month and a half. I think, you know, Tesla's geographically diverse in their production. And I think Gigafactory Shanghai is going to start to contribute positive gross profit, maybe not in Q1, you know, this was a crazy quarter with the shutdown, but in Q2, I think Gigafactory Shanghai is going to be epic. And that's what they're going to tout in this delivery press release. I think they're going to talk about the China production. They're going to talk about the run rate. They're going to get people excited about the fact that, yes, the U.S. is shut down and this business is slowing, but China's back and booming and bigger than ever. And it's going to start to offset some of these losses that we're seeing in the U.S. and Europe. And so I think that is kind of a key silver lining of good news that I'm looking for. Um, it gets me really excited. And then seeing this crazy, like already, you know, progress going on phase two of the build out, like, you know, the, the whole world isn't paused. It's just our half of the world right now, but China's back up and moving. And that's great news for Tesla. So um, but I don't know. Overall, this is going to be a bloodbath. I have no idea how the stock's going to react. Um, I think a lot of people are expecting a huge, you know, surprise down for deliveries compared to what they were a month ago. I don't know. I kind of tried to model in a worst case scenario. I think, you know, 65,000 cars, um, you know, they're going to report, you know, basically flat revenue, maybe down a little bit. Operating income could be, you know, negative 500 million plus, just like last year. That's going to look ugly. Um, I also think production wise, you know, this is also hard to do because I've only talked in deliveries up until now, but production wise, um, I think, you know, production could have gone much faster. The factory was open on March 23rd. You know, I'm, they could have last time in Q1, they produced about 77,000 cars and they delivered 63,000, but they had logistics issues. I don't know if they've worked those out or not, but, um, 
you know, so maybe they produce 75 or 80,000 cars or at least 70,000 um, trying to build out a little more inventory. That's just cyclically what happens in Q1 with Tesla. Um, and so that always makes the cash flow look worse. So I think the cash flow is going to be way worse than a loss of 500 million, maybe a billion, maybe a billion and a half. Just depends, you know, what this shutdown's impact really was, if there was one-time expenses. Um, but yeah, so I think we're in for uh, an ugly quarter overall for Tesla. But I think on the conference call, they're, they're, they're going to talk about we're in a strong financial strength. We're going to be able to weather this storm without raising capital. We have plenty of money to get through this. You know, our sales will bounce back when things reopen. China's doing better than ever. So there'll, there'll be some good news. But um, yeah, I brace for some ugly stuff. I hope Tesla proves me wrong and I'm way too pessimistic. But um, that is what it is. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. You can plug in your estimates into my model, check out my hyper charts, or just do your own thing. But let me know what you're expecting uh, for deliveries here in the next couple days. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, check out my Patreon. Huge uh, thank you to all the people supporting on Patreon. This has been a record month in terms of me putting out content. I put out more videos than ever this month, just grinding uh, because my CPMs are down, videos are getting demonetized. Um, so it's just been a tough time, but I've been trying to pump out more content than ever and all the people supporting on Patreon, um, that really means a lot. So thank you all for supporting during these crazy times. And of course, I'm going to drop an epic video analyzing Tesla's deliveries, um, when they come out in a week or so. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Anyway, this is HyperChange. See y'all next time. Peace.